Today we've got Carrot joining us. Carrot is Becca's hamster. Carrot's not my hamster. Are you? Are you there, sir? Are you? You're harmless. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello i'm lydia and i make mental health and chronic health awareness videos i have three hamsters and i'm currently looking at becca's hamster carrot who is here for a video because well you wanted to get out didn't you today i wanted to talk about some of the big misconceptions surrounding the use of antipsychotic medication to anyone who doesn't know hi i'm lydia i have mental health conditions i take haloperidol which is an a first generation antipsychotic i've taken other antipsychotics in the past and believe me when i say i have fallen victim to a lot of the stigma surrounding the use of antipsychotic and i'm going to get into that right after i I put carrot back in his cage misconception one you are only prescribed any psychotic medication if you are dealing with psychosis or a psychotic disorder such as schizophrenia not true antipsychotics are used for a number of different reasons Doctors can prescribe antipsychotic medications. And when I say doctors, I mean psychiatrists specifically, not GPs. I mean psychiatrists, someone who is completely trained within the use of psychiatric medication. While antipsychotics was created initially for the use of easing up psychosis and psychotic symptoms, that is not the only thing they are prescribed for. They're prescribed for anything ranging from depression, anxiety, eating disorders, OCD, Tourette syndrome, ADHD, PTSD, dementia, delirium. They have a number of different uses, not just typically for psychotic symptoms. Misconception number two, the side effects are worse than the condition itself. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, they have side effects and I talk very openly on Twitter about my experience with side effects and if you want me to do a video talking about that let me know in the comments down below or hit the thumbs up button so I know it's something you want to see. There are very common side effects of antipsychotics such as drowsiness, sleepiness. There are some state cases where side effects may be more serious than the condition itself. It genuinely varies person to person. No medication works the exact same way for everybody. Medications are not a one-size-fits-all and they certainly certainly don't work the same for everybody. I wish it was that simple, I wish it worked like that, but it doesn't. Typically medication, especially antipsychotics, are only prescribed when the benefits outweigh the cons and a lot of the time antipsychotics are very beneficial in what they do and they work very well for people. Obviously there are, there are exceptions to that, people can react really badly to medications, I'm not trying to shy away from that, I'm just saying the chances of you reacting horrifically, more so that the side effects are worse than the condition, are very minimal. Antipsychotic medications are addictive! That, that's not true, That they're not addictive, they are not like other medications, you do not build up a tolerance to them like some other medications such as codeine or oxycodones, or I don't know, benzodiazepines, they don't work the same way. Antipsychotics have a wide range of side effects and while the effects of the antipsychotics, antipsychotics are not typically an addictive medication. Opioid painkillers, for example, they have a high addiction rate, a really high addiction rate. Antipsychotics such as olanzapine, quetiapine, haloperidol, they're not addictive. So, no, they're not addictive. Please throw that stereotype out the window. They make the symptoms go away completely. Now, while antipsychotics are made in a way that are to ease up on psychotic symptoms or the symptoms you're experiencing which led to you being put onto antipsychotics, the effects aren't immediate. You're not gonna immediately feel at ease. You're not immediately gonna feel relief from what you have going on. They take time to build up in your system and that is how they work. How any other medication works, it takes time. The typical time frame is anywhere from two to six weeks, typically speaking, and that's how long it takes for your system to start reacting properly to the medication. It's nice to think that just simply popping a pill will make everything go away, but that is not how psychiatric medication works. And I don't want people to be under the illusion that that is how they work. 
It's nice to wish that it would be an immediate fix, but that's just not the reality of taking medication. Having hallucinations such as auditory hallucinations like myself, some symptoms don't always completely go away just because you're on antipsychotic medication. They ease up and it releases some of the pressure and the stress that builds up from them. However, I can say this from experience. I still hear voices. That's not going to just magically disappear, but they are a lot more manageable on medication than when I'm not on medication. Carrot, what are you doing? Misconception and number five. It's a one size fits all and it'll work the same for absolutely everybody. I briefly touched on this before. Medication is not a one size fits all. It doesn't work like that. What works for one person will not work for another person. The dose, the way you take it, the time you take it, the amount of time you take it in a day is different for everybody to match different people's symptoms. Personally, I take haloperidol and I take it twice a day. I'm on 1.5 milligrams in the morning and 2.5 milligrams at night. My dosage is going up and that is to try and keep in check the symptoms I'm experiencing without sedating me too much so I can actually function in society. But what works for me will not work for other people. Other people will tell you haloperidol was the worst thing that ever happened to them. Cue multiple videos. From a lot of people. I've had a very good experience with haloperidol apart from one side effect which I am going to be making a video talking about very soon but what I take might not work for you. I was on quetiapine before and it did absolutely nothing. I was taking it and my dose kept getting increased and it did nothing. It was the worst medication I've ever taken and looking back on it I don't know why I agreed to take it for as long as I did. Bad move Lydia. Bad, bad move. So these are just a few of the misconceptions that I've got for you guys. If you can think of anything else that you want to add, let me know in the comments down below. Or make a video of your own and then let me know that you've made a video because I'd really like to see what you guys get up to. Anyway, that is all I've got for this video. If you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, comment down below whatever you want. Feel free to request a video. I'm open to requests. I'm trying to get back into a schedule. And I will see you guys soon in a new video, but not before I give my two patrons a shout out, Drunk Shop Library, Sky High Tower, you guys rock, you guys are amazing. If you are interested in my Patreon, exclusive content does get uploaded and believe me when I say I can't put this shit on YouTube because I will get arrested. <laughs> Great advertising, Lydia. I will get arrested. Exaggeration. But I upload some fun things on that and I have a laugh. I'm a lot more free-spirited on that because no trolls. <laughs> no trolls know who you are. Thanks for watching, by the way. Love it when trolls watch my entire videos, but still, they're like, I don't like what she said, nah, bad person. Bitch, you're wasting your time watching me. It, 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 it's 10 to 1 in the morning, and I'm sat here filming a video with a ring light on, like it's normal, and wondering why my hamsters are being loud. My hamsters are nocturnal, of course they're being loud. Anyway, I'm rambling on, let's end this video here, and I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Peace.